What the Qs did do today was reclaim the 50-day moving average of 369, right? That's a good first start, right? We're not in, you know, all clears, all hands on deck, let's buy everything in sight, but at least the first step of the equation of reclaiming 50-day was a super mega important thing to do. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. I apologize, there was no video yesterday. I didn't get any emails for some reason. They went to my spam box. My son had back-to-back uh, -back basketball game yesterday. It was nuts. I was driving to a different town. Anyway, uh, we got more basketball games tonight, but the only thing is at least I have some time uh, to record the video. So I apologize for not having last night's video. So. In this episode, number one, it was Fed Day. Okay, Fed uh, suggested a tapering could begin uh, as early as November, right? We'll see, right? We'll see. Uh, Facebook, big, big move today uh, to the downside. Apparently, uh, Apple Ad Tracker, right, is kind of a big deal. And well, it's pretty much uh, one of those scenarios that it could affect. Uh, Tesla's bottom line, excuse me, uh, Facebook's bottom line, and Facebook from the open just got uh, absolutely demolished. As much as the Fed and Facebook was kind of a topic of conversation, the big story of the day is kind of what started on Monday. If you guys remember, and I know it's only three days ago, but if you guys remember um, Evergrande, right, a uh, real estate developer, whatever the case may be, in China was having uh, serious issues about a potential uh, default scenario. And as we talked about on Monday session, uh, market, shoot first, ask questions later, right? The market at one point, the Dow was down 900 points, uh, the Qs were down, the NASDAQ was down like 450 points, whatever it was. Just an absolute slaughter, only to kind of have a little bit of a relief rally uh, the next day. And the reason why that was such a big deal, such a kind of a, a, a eye opening for a lot of people was because, again, we haven't heard about the word default, right? Default, creditors, all that good stuff, all that bad stuff uh, since, the, since it's 07, 09 Wall Street uh, financial crisis. So this was kind of a big deal. What today's story was in the morning was really a bigger deal. And it really does show you when we talked about on Tuesday's video uh, of how the different world we live in now versus how we lived in 2007. 2007, we've never experienced before. Again, uh, the whole world, right? Not just us, but the whole world was over leveraged uh, in, in everything, credit, creative, uh, credit default swaps, all these different lending uh, instruments, uh, predatory lenders, people that, that would have verified income with buying property. One domino goes, everything goes to hell in a handbasket. Again, we're not there, right? We talked about this on Tuesday night's video. We're deleveraged. A lot of tax, toxic uh, assets, at least to everybody's knowledge, is off everybody's books. And we're in a better place today than we were in 2007. So when the headline came out today that said, Evergrande, which started the whole kind of this massive decline on Monday, they came out and said, hey, look, everything is all good. We're working with our uh, lenders, with our creditors. We're going to find a good solution. You know, don't even stress about this world. We are okay. And this was kind of like a 900-pound elephant being taken off uh, the shoulders of Wall Street. And you kind of saw that. The, gap, the Dow gapped up. Uh, 200 points or so, and then slowly but surely, it just kind of grinded up all day. And if you look at uh, if you look at the indexes at the end of the day, you had a one percent advance all the way across the board. Are we out of the woods? Not yet, right? Not yet. And we'll get to that in a second. But what it did do today, and I, and I thought today was a really, really good job of market structure. If you guys remember, we talked about. Um, the difference between volatility, okay, and average true range, Tesla, Amazon, Facebook, Apple, Nvidia, right? 
uh, Zoom, Netflix, their average true range. Volatility is a stock that goes from two to six to two to five to two to nine to two. To, it's all over the place, right? Traders think they know the difference between volatility and average true range. Volatility, again, is dangerous. It's unpredictable, okay? It's emotional. It'll put you in a position of weakness because you can't control the price action. Uh, average true range is stocks that have a big range, right? Have a wide uh, daily range. And methodically, with, uh, with the option flow market kind of going hand in hand, the moves are more predictable. You're in control. They're methodical, and they represent market structure. And why today was super important versus the first two days of the week, we got back the market structure that we desperately needed. We didn't need to worry about uh, every second that, hey, looking over our shoulder, that any second you're going to have a 10 handle off the spoos just because it was like 11.06 in the morning, right? That's what we saw come Monday and Tuesday. So I thought today's session was, first of all, it was pretty good, right? Pretty good. We'll get, we'll get to individual pivots in a second. But again, what it was more important, it returned market structure. I think it returned confidence to a lot of traders that, hey, you can just look and love the chart and trade off the chart. You know, you don't have to worry about, hey, by the way, you, you know, if spoons are going to fall off the planet uh, in the next 30 seconds. Again, it's what we saw in the first two days. And you can manage your trade organically instead of trying to play beat the clock, make sure I get out of my position before the end of the world headline or the end of the world random uh, futures move is going to have in the opposite direction of my trade. It was very, very important, very ugly, very scary. And this is why I always, you know, always talk, you know, talk about this. You know, people love the concept of volatility until things get volatile. And today, uh, very good market structure, uh, a lot of good move in technology space, which again, we have not seen in quite a while, right? Kind of moving in tandem, but more important, we're kind of set up for tomorrow. Now again, this move today was not a slam dunk green light for a monster rally into tomorrow's session. But what it did do is take care of a couple technical pieces. Let's start off with the cues. Right. So the cues after losing the 50 day moving average the first time since May the 19th on Monday and got rejected again on Tuesday. What the cues did do today was reclaim the 50 day moving average of 369, right? That's a good first start, right? Again, we're not in, you know, all clears, all hands on deck, let's buy everything in sight, but at least the first step of the equation of reclaiming 50 day was a super mega important thing to do. Now, granted, did they get rejected off the five day moving average? Absolutely. But again, you got to look at glass half full. They reclaimed the 50, rejected off the five. And again, if you've been watching this video uh, in the last couple of years, in the last couple of weeks, you know important how important it is to me. Uh, the five-day moving average represents the shortest term sentiment. The 10-day moving average represents the birth of the trade. So the bulls have a little bit of work to do, but at least for tomorrow, if we could reclaim today's highs and start building uh, off that 371 level, at least we'll change the bias, we'll change the narrative from Hey, sell everything, everything's underneath supply to, hey, you can start now doing your research, start looking for organic longs and one by one. Again, if you remember what happened on May 20th, right? May 20th finally confirmed the 50 day moving average and started this really, really huge run until we saw it till last Monday. Well, it's actually the, the Monday a couple of days ago. So this is a big deal. Um, so slowly but surely, and don't think just again, if we do reclaim the five day tomorrow that everything is gonna start rallying at once. There's a lot of names that are still underneath supply, right? Amazon, right? It's still way underneath supply. For Amazon to get good, it's going to need to reclaim like 34, 35 uh, on the close. So, you know, again, Amazon's not there. Coinbase, as strong as uh, Bitcoin is and Ethereum is and all these other crypto coins, again, way underneath supply. But there's a lot of names that look really, really good, right? Look at Square. Square did a great job today, took out this whole range, reclaimed the 50-day moving average. Look at Tesla, right? Again, we'll get to individual pivots in a second. Tesla, not only did it reclaim the 5, but it reclaimed the 10. Remember, 10-day moving average, the birth of the trade. Again, looking really good. Look at NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA reclaimed today the 5-day moving average, got rejected off the 10. If, if NVIDIA reclaims the 10-day moving average tomorrow, again, the birth of the trade. So there's a lot of names that are setting up really, really good names that we trade all the time. Again, you don't need to, you know, have put in a lot of effort tonight. You can go through uh, the QQQ members. There's only 100 of them. It'll take you what five minutes to go through 100 charts. 
You can go through 100 charts very, very quickly. You can see the names that are standing out for tomorrow's session. And if you do a little bit of legwork today, and again, I, I really encourage every single uh, new trader, an old trader, but especially a new trader, you know, have your muscle memory. Again, even if you don't know what the hell you're looking for, okay, start looking at charts. Eventually, something will click. Uh, but again, there's so much information, uh, free information out there uh, on the internet on basic Japanese candle uh, charts and all these other stuff that uh, people find fascinating and useful in their day-to-day -day, uh, you know, day-to-day -day studies. So I, I, I like the market tomorrow. I would love the market tomorrow if we do reclaim uh, today's highs on the queues and start building uh, over the five-day moving average. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots, right? There was some really, really aggressive moves today. Okay. Uh, not all of them to the long side, right? There was one really aggressive move to the short side um, and everything else was obviously waking up uh, for advance. So let's talk about it, right? And again, if, if you guys are wondering why this is my regular Twitter feed, for whatever reason, when I'm going on my when I'm going on my, uh, um, what is it called? For some reason, on our private feed, for some reason, everything everything after Tesla today is blank. I don't know what, just literally blank. I can't even go down anymore. So that's why I'm on my uh, regular feed today. Uh, so let's talk about uh, some of the pivots, right? Let's talk about some of the pivots and we'll get to uh, for tomorrow's session. So let's see here. Da, 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 da. Okay, so let's start off with Lucid. Uh, Lucid, right, had a big, big run, right? Huge run, uh, seven days in a row. It was up from the bottom, and it looked like it put in an inverted hammer. And I'll show you what the inverted hammer is in a second. Uh, Lucid for experienced traders only. Watch for potential blow off top. That's exactly what it did today. Uh, green to red, second entry could bring in pretty aggressive sellers. And here was Lucid, and here's kind of what I'm talking about on Lucid. It was up seven days in a row. Yesterday, put in a blow off top off this linear regression line. Today, when it couldn't confirm it, basically went green to red and really, really got hit. For you, for all you guys that took the trade, great, great job uh, on Lucid. Amberella, right? Amberella uh, got upgraded today. Uh, I forgot by who. I don't think it even matters. But uh, Amberella, first thing I said was 155. Uh, needs to build, but if it opens under 153.20, use that for a second entry. Here was Amberella, really nice move on Amberella here, big, big move here. So it took out the 53.20, uh, 53 took out the 55, 60, uh, 60 minute highs here, right here, right? Took out the 60 minute highs and went all the way uh, to 165, just a monster move. I think it probably gets into the mid 170s. Uh, tomorrow, you should watch this thing. Any dip into rising 60-minute uh, support or red to green type of move uh, through today's channel should be good for a continuation for tomorrow. Again, assuming uh, the market, uh, assuming the market uh, holds in there. So Amberella was very, very strong. Lucid had a monster move down. Uh, Netflix, big, big, big move today. And, and again, usually, usually you don't see uh, a $17, $18 move on, on Netflix, right? Uh, but today it was very aggressive. They started coming for uh, the 600, the 615, the 620s. But today they came for the 600 weeklies. So I wrote basically for experienced traders. And the reason why I say experienced traders, uh, by the time the stock got up to that 591, 92 level, it was already up $17. So not everybody can, can you know can trade a stock that's already up $17. But nice pop here. I still think it goes higher tomorrow. It didn't make a huge move. Uh, but a quick $4 pop here off the top of the range here, off the 10-day moving average, uh, went to 96. I think if it starts reclaiming 96 and if the market is strong again tomorrow, you could see a move all the way back up to the 614 uh, supply. So nice pop there on Netflix. Uh, can you guess what stock is very, very strong, right? Tesla, uh, they were coming for the 750 calls, one after another, after another, after another. Uh, and here was Tesla, right? Uh, 746. Uh, needs to build. I felt the stock could get to uh, 5170s today. That was the upper uh, Bollinger Band, as you can see here, 5170s measure potential. And Tesla went to roughly 53. Big move here. Here's where I, here's where I was getting the 5170s uh, right over here, right here. So 5170s is kind of where it got uh, rejected or but really really nice move on on Tesla again keep this in mind on Tesla it's been very very strong uh, they came for the 750 weeklies they came for they started buying next week's 
uh, 800 weeklies. But keep this in mind about Tesla. We're not yet even at a macro area of a general macro area that's going to bring in some really good institutional money flow. So we still have some a little bit of work to do along with everything else. But again, like I said earlier, we're definitely in the right place uh, in the right time. Uh, ZS, uh, nice pop on ZS, 277 needs to build, 278 macro. Uh, here is 277 on ZS, right? It took out... Uh, took out the 77, took out the 78, uh, went to 79 and changed. Listen, if this thing reclaims uh, 79 and change tomorrow, uh, I think it goes uh, higher as well. Again, assuming the market can reclaim the five-day moving average. Again, we don't want to assume. We want to see it happen. Guys, have a great night, everybody. Thank God the volatility, at least for one day, is gone and out of the woods and hope to be put to bed. Hopefully, we get a nice, boring, lethargic, but predictable session. Guys, have a great day. I'll see you all tomorrow.